Hey, what's up, guys? Hard Leg Joe here with the profile for What a Deck episode 181, Lunalite OTK. For a monster lineup, we're playing all Lunalites. We've got three Wolf, three Blue Cat, three Kaleido Chick, three Emerald Bird, three Yellow Martin, three Tiger, three Purple Butterfly, and one each of White Rabbit and Black Sheep. For spells, we're playing three Pot of Desires, three Foolish Burial Goods, three Lunalite Perfume, one Lunalite Fusion, three Twin Twisters, and three Fire Formation Tanky. Or only trap one copy of Lunalite Serenade Dance. Our extra deck consists of one each of Leo Dancer, Saber Dancer, Panther Dancer, Utopia the Lightning, regular old vanilla Utopia, Tiger King, Tornado Dragon, Baguska, Borolode, Skull Dread, Summon Sorceress, Nightmare Phoenix, Firefighting Darumadol, Wee Witch's Apprentice, and Underclock Taker. The side deck I'll go over in a bit. So right off the bat, I should note that this deck was essentially built as a challenge to see what could be done with pure Lunalites. I'm fully aware that adding in Dangers and Phantom Knights would make this deck much more competitive, but I specifically chose to stay away from those archetypes and focus on what Lunalites can do by themselves. So if you're looking for the best Lunalite deck, this is not it. However, if you just want to learn the basics of how to play Lunalites, or if you're looking for a more budget-friendly version of the deck that'll survive the ban list, well, this should do the trick for that. With that said, let's get right into this. Like it says in the title, this is a one-turn kill deck. You go second, you summon big numbers, and you attack for all the damage. Now, this deck plays a ton of big numbers, but the biggest and bestest number is Lunalite Leo Dancer. This is a 3500 attack fusion monster that can't be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects, and it can attack twice. Not only that, but once per turn, if this card attacked a monster, you can destroy all special summoned monsters your opponent controls. So it's got a field nuke on top of everything else. If you can get this thing on board alongside a couple of littler monsters or one big monster like Boral Load Dragon, you've pretty much won the game. Now, in order to make this, you need to fusion summon it using Lunalite Panther Dancer and any other two Lunalites of your choice. This is accomplished mainly via Lunalite Wolf, a level 6 pendulum monster that, when placed in the pendulum zone, allows you to fusion summon one Lunalite by banishing the materials from your field and or graveyard. Now the rest of the deck is set up to just spam a whole bunch of Luna Lights onto the field. Once there, you can use them to make a whole bunch of Link monsters, and what do you know? That'll put a whole bunch of Luna Lights in the graveyard that Wolf can banish as material. Next stop, Fusion City, Population OTKs. Now the only missing piece to that puzzle is Panther Dancer, which fortunately, you can dump straight from the extra deck into the graveyard with Lunalite Kaleido Chick. Her effect says once per turn, you can send one Lunalite from your deck or extra deck to the graveyard, and then this card's name is treated as the sent monster's name if you use it as fusion material this turn. What's cool is that sending a monster is actually the cost of activating the effect. So even if Kaleida Chick is negated, you can still dump a monster into the grave. She just won't take its name. Which is fine, because you don't need to substitute Kaleida Chick for Panther Dancer. You can just banish the real Panther Dancer from your grave. That being said, you'll still usually want to use Kaleido Chick as material, because she has a second effect that activates when she's banished. It says, This turn, your opponent cannot activate cards and effects in the battle phase which means even if they have some non-targeting, non-destruction removal, or a bunch of floating monsters that are going to be able to come back from Leo Dancer's field nuke, they won't be able to activate any of them. And that's really the core of the deck. These are your main two components. Get Kaleida Chick, Dump Panther Dancer, Get Wolf, Fusion Summon, Bada Bingo Bada Bingo, Attack for a Million Damage. Everything else in here, like I said, is just about spamming monsters to the field. Perhaps the best way to do that is with Yellow, Martin, and Tiger. Tiger is your other pendulum scaled. When it's played as a spell, it can once per turn, target a Lunalite in the graveyard, and special summon it. The monster you summon can't attack, its effects are negated, and it's destroyed in the end phase. But none of that matters, because Kaleida Chick can still dump a monster even if its effects are negated, 
And whatever you summon, it's just going to be used as Link or Ixie's material anyway. This synergizes with Martin, whose effect is, if this card is in your hand or graveyard, you could target one Lunalite card you control, return it to the hand, and if you do, special summon this monster in defense mode. Now Martin's effect is a hard once per turn, but Tiger's is not, which means you can summon a Lunalite from the grave with Tiger, return it to the hand by summoning Martin, and then just play Tiger again and summon another Lunalite from the graveyard. If you've got these two, and then something to normal summon, and a way to get any Lunalite into the graveyard, you've got everything you need to make Boral load. Or in many cases, Saryuya, who will let you draw onto your deck and search for the wolf that you need. It's also worth mentioning here that Kaleido Chick is not a hard once per turn either, so if you need to, you can normal summon it, use it to dump Martin into the graveyard, do a whole bunch of Link shenanigans, then use Tiger to summon Kaleido Chick back, and use its effect again to dump Panther Dancer. The rest of the monsters in here are useful, but not necessarily mandatory. If you were going to run the Danger or the Phantom Knights, these are the things you'd want to consider taking out. Blue Cat's probably the least useful Luna Light monster, but I played it 3 because it's a level 4, and its effect can be awesome in certain situations. It summons any Luna Light from the deck when it's destroyed, making it a decent defensive option in a pinch, and if you special summon it, you can target a Luna Light you control, except itself, and double its attack for the rest of the turn. Meaning if you can Pendulum summon this alongside Leo Dancer, you won't need any other monsters, because this will be a 7,000 beat stick that can attack twice and nuke the field. Uh, Emerald Bird, meanwhile, when it's summoned, lets you discard a Luna Light card to draw a card. Which seems a little underwhelming at first, but it's actually very useful since it lets you set up your graveyard while digging through your deck. If you don't open with Kaleida Chick, this can be a great use of your normal summon, especially if it lets you discard Martin. Purple Butterfly, meanwhile, has two effects. You can discard it to give a Lunalite a thousand attack until the end of the turn, and you can banish it from the graveyard to summon a Lunalite from your hand. Both are useful in certain situations, and you can use both effects in the same turn, meaning if you open with, like, two Kaleida Chicks, you can summon one, discard Butterfly to raise its attack, and then banish it to summon the other one. The last two, we just play at one because they're the most situational, but they're still decent. White Rabbit summons a Lunalite from the grave when it's normal summoned, and once per turn, you can return spell traps your opponent controls to the hand, up to the number of other Lunalite monsters you control. Which is a bit niche, but it can be surprisingly effective when dealing with the new Endymion cards. Black Sheep, meanwhile, you can discard to add any Lunalite from your graveyard to your hand, which means it plus Kaleido Chick essentially searches the entire archetype. Uh, speaking of searching, all the Luna Lights are Beast Warriors, so Fire Formation Tenki is a must. It can search all of them but Wolf, who's just a couple levels too higher. And this itself can be searched by Tiger King, who can be summoned with any two level 4 Beast Warriors. In addition to that search, Tiger King has a second effect that lets you detach to negate the effects of all face-up monsters on the field except Beast Warriors which can be a great way to deal with your opponent's field set up for the OTK, or at the very least, just force out some of their negations. Moving back to spells, Lunalite Perfume is an amazing normal spell with two effects. You can activate it from the hand to summon a Lunalite from the graveyard, and you can banish it from the graveyard, discard a card, and search any Lunalite monster from the deck. Not only is it Monster Reborn and Rhoda combined, but you can use both of these effects in one turn, and neither of them are hard once per turns. You can discard one copy of this to activate another in the grave, and then use that one you just discarded to get another search. This is part of the reason why we play Foolish Burial Goods, it can just send this to the graveyard for a search. The other reason is Lunalite Serenade Dance. Its on-field effect is pretty much useless, I'm not even going to cover it, which is why we only play it at one. But if it's in the graveyard, you can banish it, discard a card, and special summon any Luna Light from the deck. Very useful for getting your plays started. That just leaves us with one remaining Luna Light card, which is Luna Light Fusion, which I'm honestly considering getting rid of because I barely use it. Uh, I only have it here because Martin has a second effect that says if it's sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can search a Luna Light spell trap from your deck. 
Unfortunately, you can't search perfume because there's a space between the words Luna and Light, which just leaves Luna Light Fusion, the trap that you don't want in your hand, and another Luna Light trap that I'm not even playing because it's not really all that good. So, this is a free card if you open with Martin and Bird, and it can occasionally work in place of Wolf, especially if you banish all three copies, but I think I've only used it like once or twice, and it's not really required for the deck. Our remaining two cards, then, are generic tech slots. I went with Twin Twisters, because Endymion and Spell Mining Chain Burn are really popular right now, and we don't really mind the discard. But if you want to, you can just as easily replace this with Called by the Grave if you're worried about hand traps. Most of the time, you can actually play through hand traps pretty well with this deck, especially with Pot of Desires giving you extra draws. But if your opponent's not playing any spells that you need to get rid of, this is definitely a better choice than Twisters. Speaking of Pot of Desires, works really well in this deck. Everything's played at three. You just want to make sure that you do as much as you can before you activate Desires, because in the off chance that you do happen to banish all your chicks or all your wolves, then you're pretty much just fucked. And that's it for the main deck. All that remains is the extra deck, which is actually pretty toolboxy. You have access to pretty much whatever links you want to run, as well as a pretty solid rank 4 toolbox. I found it was important to have as much spell trap removal as possible, which is why I opted for Tornado Dragon, Phoenix, and Darumadol. And I figured I had enough OTK power already, so I went for Boral Load over Boral Sword, since this gives you some removal options for the few things you can't get over with Leo Dancer. The only real go-first card I'm playing is Bagusco, which is not too bad, especially if it's underneath a Skulldread boosting its defense. But if you know you're going first, Evil Swarm Nightmare and even Exiton Knight can both be excellent stun options. Uh, as for the rest of my extra deck choices and the side deck, I was planning to go over it, but I have a feeling this video is already way too long, so I'm just going to leave it at that. If you have any questions, just ask me down in the comments below. Or watch the main video, there I'll be playing 10 random duels against opponents on YGO Pro, showing off how this thing works, and talking about it for the better part of an hour. That video should be on the end card and linked down in the description. Anyway, until next time, good luck, and have fun.